and welcome to day seven of our 30 day coding challenge. Excited this time because we get to switch it up. You might have been saying, well, we're doing a lot of drawing. What about algebra and outside of shapes? And so we decided for our second kind of bigger project to build a basic graphing calculator. And today we're going to focus on decomposition and maybe identifying an easy component. So I don't know about you, but I'm a little bit older now. I'm getting older. I used to use this TI calculator a lot back in the day in my algebra classes. And one thing I always wondered is when I went into this Y equals screen and let's say type something like Y equals X squared, and then I tried to graph it. I always wondered like, how is that thing uh, sweeping across there and graphing? So we are going to basically build this um, in Python, uh, a basic version of it, right? Nothing too complicated. So why don't you jump in and uh, get set up if you're not already. Sorry, what I meant by get set up was go to, <coughs> excuse me, Trinket, T-R-I-K-E-T, or T-R-I-N-K-E-T, and Python, Trinket Python. And um, if you've done our star challenge, just delete all that out. And I was going to start with an animation today of the overall project. So I've hidden the code here, went way out of the view, and I'm just going to play it. And I want you to think about how would you break this down? Like, what components do you see? Okay, now certainly you could uh, pause the video, rewind it, watch it again, but try to break that down into at least a couple of things. And when you do that, um, in your um, in your blank trinket, in your blank program. Type in your uh, like hashtag, you know, this is step one. And then try to do, you know, as many components as you can. Okay, now you may have heard of um, a phrase called computational thinking. And we wanted to focus on uh, this in this, in this uh, calculator breakdown. So you could Google that if you wanted to, but computational thinking is how do you partner like your math and STEM understanding in general? How do you partner that with computers? How could you use the, the thought process you're used to with computers? So we have broken that down into four pillars, although there's more, I'm sure, but four just focal points, one of which is what you just try to think through decomposition. How would you take something that seems like an elephant or something huge and break it down into smaller parts. Because it, it's intimidating for uh, kids sometimes to think about how I can't program that, I can't do this, it's too much. And so here's four that we came up with. There's a grid, there's a, a gridded pattern that comes on there. Uh, you might've wrote down that there's, there's some axes that are bolded out. Um, in this case, there's a U-shaped parabola. It's an equation that was graphed. Um, and there was a character I put in Swampy from, uh, I think it's Where's My Water. My kids love that and uh, that I put it in there. And that's from Disney, by the way. I'm not, I did not create Swampy. Um, and it has some color thickness. There's probably other things you could have put in there, but let's say there's, you know, certainly components. And one thing you can do is comment those things out, right, like this, as a plan, as a structure. And that's part of the computational thinking process without actually writing any code. Now, if you're going to pick the easiest one, I'm going to pause and let you think about what do you think is probably the easiest? Well, we think it's the X, Y axis. Not that it definitely has to be the easiest, but it's definitely one that we think we could teach you today in a few minutes. So let's stick with the, I'm going to use the phrasing setup because we can put a lot of initializing code in the setup. So if you missed our first one, we are going to one more time use, well, probably more than one more time for these projects. Uh, a lot of times it's easy using Turtle. It's a, it's, a pro, uh, it's a package where we can do drawing, and it's a nice way to introduce uh, text-based languages. So we're going to import that. We are going to name our Turtle object T, like we did for the first one. So T equals Turtle um, dot capital T Turtle open and close parentheses so that'll bring in our turtle and um, yeah let's leave it at that for now so get that code in there and um, 
One thing people don't always consider is that this is just a big X, Y axis that you're dealing with, right? So that could actually be a really good first step for kids too, is to say, okay, let's start somewhere on the left. Let's uh, go, by the way, there is a uh, go to command instead of set position. So I'm gonna say T, which is my turtle, T dot go to. Let's use that just so you understand they're the same thing. Uh, I'm gonna go left to negative 200. Uh, remember it's pixels, so it's gonna not look as far as what you'd be used to. And if I just play that, Notice that the actual pen draws over that way. Um, now, if you don't want that, you could just put the pen up. So t.pen up. And then when it goes over there, it won't draw. And then after we get there, I'm going to put that pen back down. So t.pen down. And let's go. Uh, Let's go to um, positive 200, zero. And notice that the pen was down, but if we draw all the way across, it goes to 200 to the right. And that's 200 pixels. And uh, if I asked you to, okay, that's the x-axis, how could you draw in the y-axis? Why don't you just pause and try to see if you can't finish it out? So I copied that four lines, and I'm going to paste it down below here. And I'm going to say, okay, again, I, once I, my personal thought was if I go across and then I can pull the pen up and then it's actually go down to uh, zero in the X direction and negative 200 in the Y. And then similarly, I can go to zero comma positive 200. And if I do this, it sweeps and then sweeps up. Okay. So this is a basic structure for us. Uh, before we end today, let's add in one more thing. Uh, you might notice that some things were different colors or thicker and bold. We're going to leave the axis black for now. But let's go t dot pen size and set the pen size to something a little thicker. I think it defaults to one if I remember correctly, and then three would just be three times thicker. So if I run this, now the axis might look bolded in like it did originally. So we have done one, <coughs> excuse me, component of this calculator, and we will finish building it out in the coming days. Thanks for watching.